a foundation of grace that is strong. So Mary's gifting, we all have gifts, right? Yeah. Mary has a gifting of not only pastoring and preaching, but she has a special prophetic gift. So I just want to set the stage for those of you who may not understand that prophetic gifting. She speaks as she hears from the Lord. And she's learned this and it's a part of who she is. It's in her DNA. It really is. It's in her DNA. So we're inviting Mary today to do our service because we want to culminate our service and be blessed too. Because we all need refreshing. But we want you gentlemen to join us in this. So we just thank you, Mary. Thank, thank you for you being for, here. Thank you for and thank you for our, your friendship and your oh, encouragement. Mary encourages us all the time. She knows as a pastor that pastors need a lot of prayer and encouragement. Yes. She knows. <laughs> it's true. And we, we can share prayers with one another, right? Yes. Yes. We can. Amen. Amen. So I invite Mary. Let's thank give you. her a hand. Mary Dory. Thank you. Well, as usual, I've brought tons of notes. <laughs> but actually, how many of those we'll, we'll go through, I don't know. Because uh, what I want to speak from my heart first, what kind of I'm feeling as I'm just sitting here watching what's going on. Um, uh, I don't know how many times I've been here to minister, quite a few times through the years, because we've known each other a long time. So I'm going to say maybe eight or nine times through the years, something like that. But um, coming together, and what I love is, is I'm sitting there, I'm looking out, and I'm seeing, and this is important to me, I'm seeing multiple generations of people seated here. I'm seeing grandmas, and then I'm seeing moms, and I'm seeing grandchildren, and maybe there's even great-grandchildren here, I'm not sure. But I'm seeing a lot of that going on. And I'm seeing that connection for families, too, in Jesus' name. And I know how powerful, how powerful that is. And I'm seeing the young people take their liberty in the things of the Spirit and bringing a presentation or a way of worship, a way of speaking about communion, a way of doing things that is not necessarily traditional but rich because it comes from the Spirit of God. And it affects our lives. And uh, I'm thinking that you're on to something here. <laughs> and I think through the years that I've come, you've always been on to something, but something is building and progressing. And I think that's what I'm feeling, is the building and the progressing of what started maybe many years ago, but it keeps on being built up. And you're not done building yet. But you're getting ready to take up and take out and make room for more. And that's the important part. There's a scripture in Isaiah 2, uh, not Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah also, that says, um, extend your tent. Uh, push out your boundaries to the right and to the left. Make room for more. And so I think that if there's anything that's going on here, in spite of, how many of you have circumstances that aren't always so nice? Okay, almost everybody. But in the midst of those kind of circumstances, that's not your focus. Your focus is something else, and it's the kingdom of God. And because that's your focus, God is ready to add much more. And are you wanting to receive that? That's what's important. Are you ready? You know, um, Baltimore City needs your help. I know, I know we are in the midst of a very heated presidential election. I'm not here to speak on politics because I don't feel real invested in the political realm. But um, I'm here to tell you that what will happen in the future to the United States will not be solved by either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. They have not that kind of authority that the church of Jesus Christ has. You are the salt and the light to this world. 
That's a pretty powerful position. That's a pretty powerful bit of authority that's been given to you. And if you rise up and take your place, then America will rise up too. The potential to make America great again rests in the hands of the body of Christ. You're the ones God has called by name. That doesn't exclude, you know, political people and things like that. Like I said, I'm not investing in that. I'm investing in the kingdom of God taking over the whole world just like Jesus came and paid his blood for. That's where I'm making my investment today. And so I just want to tell you that if there's going to need to be changes, you people will be frontliners and seeing things change because God has given you the authority to do so. There's a little word that is a very powerful word. It's called intent. Everybody lives out of the intent of their heart, whether you know it or not, whether you want to admit it or not. Intent is a very powerful, powerful force each one of us has inside. God had an intention. His intention was he so greatly loved the world that he decided with a full heart and with a full intention to send his son who was willing to come to save the world because he loved the world. That was God's intention. And if you read the Bible, you see that God never swayed one second from that intention. He didn't let Pharaoh stop him. He didn't let uh, the, the persecution of the nation of Israel stop him. He didn't let anything stop him. He had a plan, and he saw it from beginning to end. He had an intention, an original intention for mankind. What was that original intention? He wanted sons and daughters. That was his intention. And even when Adam and Eve made a mistake, even when they went out on their own, God still had that intention in mind. And it was his intent to restore mankind back to his original intention. And he did that through Jesus Christ. He did that through the empowering of the Holy Spirit, who Jesus said would stay and remain and abide with us forever because God intentionally did that. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter, I don't know if it's 3 or chapter 11, it says that God, God had an intention to form the universe, and he formed the universe out of what was invisible to human eye but quite visible to God. And he took the invisible and he made it visible because then the earth came into being. That was God's intention. And he's never lived for one moment outside of that intention. So I'm asking you today, what, what is it? What is your intention? What is it in your heart? People can have a lot of different intentions, right? We read about them in the paper. Some people's intentions are, you know, to hurt other people. How'd they get to that place? Well, probably they've been hurt in their life, and so all they could give is what they got, right? But, but what is the intention of your heart as someone who knows Jesus as Lord and Savior? What do you see? Do you see your circumstances looming bigger, or do you see your circumstances in light of the finished work of Christ? What do you see? You have to say that because inside of that intention in your heart is the power. It's the power to carry the love that you have received to a whole world that needs to know God's love. So it's very powerful. The church, let me fix that. People who know Jesus are at a place at this time in history, I think, where they're no longer satisfied with coming to church, following the agenda, doing, having, and then leaving the door and saying, see you next week. They're no longer satisfied with that because in our hearts, by reading the word, we know there's more. 
We know there's more. We know what Jesus did in his lifetime. What I, one of the many things I like about Jesus is the Bible says that he healed everyone who came to him. Every single person without making excuses. Oh, maybe it isn't your day to be healed. You know, what did you do? Did Jesus ever ask anybody really what they did? He just said, hmm, what's your intention? And he said, let it be done unto you according to what you believe. That was the intention. What's your intention? My intention is to touch the hem of your garment, Jesus, and be totally and completely healed. Jesus said, ooh, somebody touched me with some intention, and I felt virtue leave my body. That was how Jesus did business. So he was moved by what he perceived as people's belief and trust in him. He felt that intention of their heart. And when he felt that, he sprang into action. Jesus himself was moved by the intention of his father because he said, I only do what I, what I see the father doing. I only say what I hear the father saying. So Jesus himself responded to those kind of things, didn't he? So in this room, there's a lot of intentions. And those intentions are the power that's motivating you to send you forth. I want you to realize what's at stake here. There's more at stake than um, who will be elected president of the United States, although that's important. Don't, I mean, we all have a civic duty to perform. Okay, we all do have that civic duty, and I don't take that lightly. But there's more at stake here. If your intention in your heart is not moved by the fact that you see people who don't know God and they have no hope. You need to get in touch with Jesus and get you a better intention. If the intention in your heart is, well, I'm just taking care of myself and, you know, I, I'd like to do more. I hope I could do more. I pray I could do more. But right now, baby, I'm in trouble and that's as far as I can see. If that's your intention, then be it done unto you according to what you believe. But I'm thinking that here at this church, you're intending for some more. I don't think, you know, there have been some prophetic words spoken over this church. Have you seen the reality of those prophetic words yet, David? Have you seen a little? But not the whole enchilada, so to speak. <laughs> not yet. So what should our position be? We know God has a specific intention. Should we say, eh, too long, too much time has gone by. You know, if God wanted to do this, he would have just done it like 15 minutes after he said it. Right? Well, I'm not as young as I used to be, or I'm feeling bad today, or whatever, whatever, whatever our expressions are, you know. But I'm going to tell you, God has an intention for this church. And he will, will, will bring it to pass. And you and I get to contribute and walk with him in it. So there's no too late. There's no, we've been at this too long. There's no, well, nothing ever works out for me. There's no that. It's getting our intention right on with God. And going forward. This, I want to teach you something about quantum physics. Are you ready? <laughs> Probably some of you sitting here know more about quantum physics than I do, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. I've been studying quantum physics not like so scientifically, but mostly from a a spiritual point of view, because I had a, um, I kind of wondered, people say, well, the glory of God, we're going to do this in the glory realm. Glory, 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 glory. And I thought, what is that? Because I heard what they said, but I didn't understand what that realm was. And, and began to read some books and open up my heart a little bit, and I began to understand it from a 
more of a scientific approach than just a Holy Spirit approach, but the Holy Spirit, you know, is in charge of science. So he made, made everything work together. But I want you to think about this. In our lifetime, we're seated here. Uh, seated. I wish I could talk English. <laughs> I don't even speak Spanish very good. <laughs> you think I would from New Mexico. <laughs> but uh, we're seated here, and there is endless possibilities available to us. In quantum physics, the basic principle is that these waves are coming towards you as whatever they represent to you, whatever the intention is of your heart. And when you see it and recognize it as a potential, hey, I could be a minister and go through all the world and preach the gospel. That's my that's mine, okay? As soon as you see it, in quantum physics, the science tells us it becomes a reality to you. Jesus said, when he was going to give the message to those, um, the Beatitudes, and he was, going to, he was seated on the hillside, remember? All these people were set, sitting out there waiting for him to speak. And in the Amplified Bible, it says, Jesus stood up. He opened his mouth to get prepared to speak, and it said he looked up and he received his sight. And when he received his sight, he shared the intention of God's heart over the people he was going to minister to. And out of his mouth to a kind of ragtag group of people, they were just people who needed help from God sitting there on that mountainside. He said, you! are the light of this world. You are the salt of the earth. In the natural, do you think any of them were either light or salt? Nope. But he saw a potential, a possibility. And when he saw it, it became more real to him than who was sitting in front of them and how they looked in the natural. Can you believe that? And so he spoke. You have potential. You have possibilities coming towards you. And there's millions of them. And they're for good. You know how I know they're for good? Because you've been recreated in the image of Jesus Christ. Because old things have passed away and the fresh and new has come. You said, yeah, but I haven't always experienced good in my life. Me neither. And I know that that feels bad. But did you notice what I said? That feels bad? That is a different realm to walk in. You can walk in that realm of your feelings based on bad things that have happened to you in your life. And you can expect your possibilities to be bad possibilities right. because that's what your feelings have told you. Or... You could say, that's who I was. It's not who I am, not who I is now, not who I am now. <laughs> My English needs some work. <laughs> it's not who I am now. And so the word of God tells me, Jeremiah 29, 11, I use this word all the time. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of good and not evil. Plans to give you hope and good in your final outcome. Those are the kind of possibilities that God is sending your way. Have you ever um, gone to the beach? Everyone here has pretty much had that experience, maybe. When you, you know when you go to the beach and you're standing on the shore, you kind of look out and... I always, I always will find a place to stand where I'll make the microphone to do that. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. That doesn't need to be my possibilities for the future. <laughs> I am self-correcting. Thank you, Jesus. Um, you stand on the shore, and you can watch the waves form, can't you? And when you see them far out, they're usually not very formed, are they? And they usually tend to be kind of small. When you see them far out, you don't get the 
you don't get the full picture of maybe the height and depth and volume associated with the wave because it's far away. But as it begins to come in closer, it starts to become more defined until it comes all the way up the shore and could go right over you, right? You, if you see your healing, you can have it, okay? If you see your dream, you can have it. That's what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about recognizing the possibility that's coming towards you and allowing it to become more and more defined until it crashes right over you and it becomes part of you. That's quantum physics. That's called, in quantum phys physics, popping a quiff. Q-W-I-F-F. -F. You can look it up on the internet. It's popping a quiff. A possibility. It, they talk about it for elect electrons. When you see it and recognize it for what it is, for its potential, it becomes a reality to you and then it goes from being a possibility to something that will come to pass. Every great inventor, every great scientist, every great musician, every great artist, etc., operated in that realm. At the moment, they didn't have the natural talent to do what they wanted to do, but they recognized their potential and realized I can do this. And when they recognized that, it became a reality to them. In the Bible, one story of a lady who, the, all the miracles almost in the Bible where Jesus healed people, many of them are people in quantum thought are popping a quiff. And let me give you an example. Know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says that she spent her livelihood getting doctors to try to help her. But she, the Bible says she suffered at the hands of many doctors because they just could was this in the realm of possibilities in her heart. She did it by going to where Jesus was. She did it by pressing through a large crowd of people, but she had something she saw in the spirit that she was determined to make a reality. She said to herself, if... I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. That was her wave coming towards her in the ocean, okay? And so when she grabbed a hold of that, she said, okay, <laughs> I am taking the steps now to make that happen. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Jesus said, whoa, virtue has gone forth from me. The disciple said to him, and he said, who touched me? And the disciple said, excuse me, Jesus. Everybody in this place is touching you. Everybody's rubbed up against you. Everyone's been by you. Everybody's been pulling on you. But there was something about the way she touched Jesus. There was an intention in her heart. She had an intent. She recognized a possibility. And that possibility sprung into reality because it says, when she touched the hem of his garment, the flow of blood stopped, and she was healed. And Jesus said, who touched me? And she was afraid. She ran away because, you know, people had picked on her in the past. For it wasn't thought of as a very, that kind of disease was not thought of in a very good light. Many people thought in those days, if you had a disease, then you did something bad and you deserved it, and that it was probably some sort of punishment from God. And so she was looked down upon for being sick for all those years. So out of, out of fear, she removed herself from the situation. But Jesus said to her, oh, woman, go your way, for your faith has made you whole. She popped a big quiff that day, and she got the desire of her heart. And she was made whole. I want, 
I want us to do that. I want us to take a few moments before we get to the prophetic part. Oh, <laughs> before we get to the prophetic part of the ministry and pop a quiff for ourselves. I don't know what your, what your concern is. I don't know what you has eluded you in, in terms of your life and in your happiness. But I want to tell you that with God, nothing is impossible. And you have to decide if you're going to believe that or not believe that. You know, the problem with most of us Christians isn't our sin, because we know what to do with sin, okay? We gave it to Jesus and we're set free. We understand that part. Most, some don't, but we do. The, the problem that we have for the most part as Christians is that somehow we think that our healing, our deliverance, our peace ultimately depends on us. Ultimately, if we could just find the right formula, if we could just say all the right words, if we could just act right for a whole day, you know, <laughs> Maybe some of the, maybe this could happen if we didn't say, you know, give somebody a interesting s signal uh, during traffic, you know. <laughs> if, if we hadn't done those kind of things, because we think that we are disqualified because of our actions, I want to tell you that your good actions didn't get you saved. And your good action, or your bad actions won't disqualify you. Because you are saved by the intention of the living God who sent his son and made a way for you. And you are permanently grafted in to the kingdom of God. And you can't ungraft yourself. I suppose if you really made up your mind you didn't like Jesus anymore, I don't know. But even then, I just got a feeling, the Bible says in, in the Psalms that uh, he even goes to hell and, you know, darkness can't even hide you because God is, goes to the darkness and he'll come just to get you. You know, you, I like Psalm 23. It says, only goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. There's a picture of that in, in Hebrew. It's like... Um, if you could think of goodness and mercy this way, like they're two attack dogs, okay? And no matter where you go, you're going to be attacked by goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy is going to be relentless. Oh, you need goodness. I'm giving you all the goodness. You're like, oh, get these attack dogs off of me. They're attacking me with goodness and mercy. That's what that scripture is talking about. You're going to be hunted down by goodness and mercy, and you can't get away from it. No way, no way, no way. That's the truth, goodness and mercy. So you can't even say, and you can't even tell yourself, my circumstances are interfering with my future, with my faith in God, with my sonship, because God doesn't make that any part of his reality. You've heard it said here, you're saved by grace and not by anything you could have done. There's a great deal of safety in knowing that. And it has just the opposite effect of what religion says it will do. Well, if you just go around telling people they can do anything and still be saved, they're just going to think they have a license to sin. You've been sinning without a license long before. <laughs> you didn't need no license for that. You just done that when it was part of your old nature, right? Easy. Nobody, nobody taught you. you just like, uh-huh, okay. Huh? You were, but, but what God's grace and love does, it has just the other effect. Love is a much better motive motivator than condemnation and guilt because people eventually will give in to condemnation and guilt because it wears them down and they'll say well once a goofball always a goofball I guess this is who I am and okay I'm just stuck with it 
and people will get worn down. But when you know you are loved and unconditionally, it makes you rise up and not fall down. I was studying um, prophetic ministry, very good man, wrote a wonderful book, he called it Translating God. If any of you ever have an interest in the prophetic and you want to read a little bit more about it, I recommend this book by a man by the name of Sean Bowles. I don't know if you've ever heard of Sean. You could Google him and you could see some of the meetings he attends to where God gives him such right-on words. He knows people's names and their business names and all kinds of details. And he says the motivator for him is that God's unconditional love. And he uses that information to let them know, hey, God cares about you. And from that specific information, then he gives them the prophetic word for their future, for their destiny. And it really changes people's hearts and helps them. But one of the statements he makes in his book is that people are influenced most by those who give them the most hope. So hope is what God's given us through his love. And the more of his hope we take in, the more influence he has in our lives, the more we, we move in him, right? So love, hope, faith, all those intangibles, all those things that we can't necessarily see but God sees will keep you all the days of your life. Because people who know and love God and feel his love, they don't want to do bad. And they know that if they do, they have someone seated in heaven on their behalf who will restore them. I think the world would like to know this. I do not think the world is interested in religion. There was only one group of people that Jesus got aggravated with during his walk on earth, pretty much, was the religious community. He didn't mind the prostitutes. He didn't mind the adulterers. He didn't mind the tax collectors. He worked with them, but the religious he minded because they knew the way in, and he said they won't enter in, and they prohibit other people from entering in because there's a level of control that religion wants to keep on the lives of people. If you think you have to come to me so that you could hear a word from God, may I tell you that you are absolutely wrong. I can give you a word from God, but you can sit right in your seat, open your heart, and hear from God for yourselves. Because you're not dependent on a person. You're dependent on the Spirit of God. Who will never, the Bible says, I will never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, never, no, never leave you without support. I think you must mean it. He says it a lot of times. So let's pop a quiff. Think of what's bothering you or what circumstance or what you've been. It doesn't even have to be something that's bothering you. Maybe it's a business that you wanted to always start and you just haven't found the way yet. Maybe it's family members you want to see come into the kingdom. Maybe it's a sickness in your body. And for whatever reason, you still are feeling the manifestation of this, those symptoms. It doesn't matter what it is. There's no wrong thing here. It's whatever you think you need to have help with. So if you stand up for a minute. I want you to pretend we're going to use our imagination. Can I tell you as Christians, it's absolutely okay for you to use your imagination? <laughs> Do you know that? Please, use your imagination. One of the best gifts I had as a kid was I had a great big imagination. I always imagined I was this, that, or the other thing. And then as I grew older, I began to think, well, now that's not reality. You better stop that now. And okay, there's some truth to that. But, but imagination is how God created and framed the whole world. 
He saw something in his mind, in his heart. It didn't exist in the natural, but to him it was in his imagination, and then he called it into existence. So you can use that gift of imagination for yourselves, and it's perfectly okay to do it, okay? So I want you to pretend like you're standing at the beach. You're right on the shoreline. This will be easy for Liz because tomorrow she'll be going to the beach. So she's going to be sitting, she's going to be standing by the beach a lot, just calling some waves in. So we know she'll be doing that tomorrow. But, um, and, and, and look out and see the waves beginning to form. And think in your heart what you need to see come in. Do you have one? And then watch that wave start to come to shore. And you're going to notice as it gets closer, it's going to get wider. And it's going to get taller. And it's going to have depth. And it's going to become more. And when you see it for yourself, raise your hand. Use your imagination now. Don't let it stop you. (laughs) And now kind of brace yourself the way you would if you expected a big wave to come over you. It's scary and exciting at the same time, isn't it? It's like, oh, what if I get knocked down? Oh, what if I swallow water? But at the same time, it's like, Oh, look at that wave. This is going to be fun, right? So it has both aspects of it all at once. Do you see it? Now brace yourself. Here it comes. Did it come over you? When you saw it, it left the imagination realm and it became reality for you. It changed. Now you're going to hear the voice of God speaking to you and telling you how to proceed with what you have received. There might be some natural actions that you could take. And now without fear, you could go ahead and take those steps. Do not give in to fear. Fear is never from God, never. Never, never, never. Only two things the devil can do to you, and I mean it, only two. People have told me, you know, the devil broke my washing machine. He did? Probably not. You know, the, there's only two things the devil can do to you. One is try to make you afraid and then lie to you. If you refuse to walk in fear and do not receive the lie, he's done everything he can do. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care how many books they write about there's this spirit and that spirit and this and that. You might get all this. I don't care what they say. I know that the book of Colossians says that Jesus destroyed the devil and paralyzed him and deprived him of power. I know that's what it says. It's written in the book. The devil's a liar. He's always been a liar. And he traffics in fear. If you do not have fear and you do not believe the lie, he's done. So refuse it in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid. Embrace your destiny. Embrace your future. Doesn't matter if you're young or old or in between. You can be seated. The other thing that I want to say is because a few of you have talked to me about this, and I, and I have a sensitivity of this in, in my own heart, too. I know that there's a, a few of you in this room who specifically have lost children. Some of you recently have lost other loved ones close to you, maybe a mom, dad, you know, brother, sister, etc., whatever, and whoever. And 
that's kind of, I want to pop a quiff for you in that today just by telling you this, okay? So you could be free. There's a story in the Bible about the man David. David was with Bathsheba, and she became pregnant. And they had a child before Solomon, okay? And this child somehow got sick, became very, very ill. David was heartbroken for his child. He put on mourning clothes, even though the child was still alive. He put on mourning clothes, sackcloth and ashes. He threw himself on the ground and he wailed and cried out to God for the life of his child. The people who were close to David worried about him. They said, we've never seen a man grieve about a child before. What's going to happen if this child should die? What's going to happen? They were concerned. Well, the Bible goes on to tell us that the child did die. And one of David's men had to come to him and uh, tell him what happened. And he was nervous. He didn't know what David would do, what action he would take. Maybe he'd even want to take his own life in such sorrow. And so he told him. But David did a funny thing. He washed his face. I've heard way too many stories and things for them. So one of them has said that as part of their testimony. Feel for believing that. Well, you're just, this is not logical. You know, like Mr. Spock, this is not. The Bible's full of stories that defied human logic every single time. And I believe every one of them. I don't care. So you can believe this too, right? You can believe this. And you could be free from the haunting grief of death. You could be free now, and you could be free even when you meet Jesus face to face, knowing that there's so much more. There is so much more. Do you believe that? I really do. I've been, your belief put myself in that place. Like, yes, I went up to that mountain. I was staring. What would that have felt like to me to see Jesus transformed in all his beauty? all his divinity, the radiance of his glory. And, and right away, Peter, who was a man who liked to have a plan, said, you know what? Because he was talking to Elijah and Moses up there. Isn't that weird? Now, how could he talk to Elijah went straight to heaven. Moses, we think, died. And there he was talking to those guys like, oh, Jesus. Didn't anybody tell you you're not supposed to do that? Well, anyway. Elijah and Moses were up there talking to him and explaining some things to him. And Peter said, oh, Jesus, let me build a booth. One for each of you. One for Elijah. One for Moses. One for you, Jesus. Because people always think they got to do something. (laughs) But all of a sudden, they heard the voice of the Father. And they said, this is my beloved son in whom I delight in. Listen to him. That was all they had to do. It was easy. That's all you have to do, is open your heart and listen to the Spirit of God talk to you. It's so much easier, my friends, than we have ever let it be. It's so much easier. Um, Okay, now I'm going to just spend a little time doing some prophetic ministry, if that's okay. And I may not get a chance to give a word to all of you, but I will, I will make this bargain with you if you'd like. When I get done and the church service ends, because I, want to, I don't want to keep you from their deal. Okay. So, so I don't want you to feel left out. Because people will say, well, do you think God doesn't like me? I said, oh, yes. He absolutely likes you. So don't feel that way, okay? So we don't want people to feel that way. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Heather, stand up. 
I thought about you a little bit last night, and um, I talked. I asked the Lord, Lord, what about Heather? Um, her mommy's going to stand with her. <laughs> and I, I saw in the spirit um, Heather, who's working as a nurse now, and all the education that you gained, and all the opportunities that you're in, and the depth of your heart for seeing people helped and healed through nursing. And I saw that. I saw Heather the mom, okay, and the wife. I saw that part. And then I saw this other Heather. There's a picture of you <laughs> in the room I'm staying in, and you're younger then. But I saw past that picture to little Heather. I saw a little Heather who was raised in the church, who walked through whatever building, whatever place her mom and dad had, whether it was their own home or this building, and began to have a great desire for the things of God and for the things of the Spirit and had an imagination about what some of that could be like and what your place could be in the future. And sometimes people feel torn, like they have to choose one thing or the other, Heather. But God said to tell you, Heather Franklin, Talbert, Okay. Listen to the voice of the Lord. You can have it all. You can have it all. You can have those dreams of ministering, and, and even you have a pulpit ministry, you really do. You can have those dreams, and you can have this married life dream. You can have this dream of helping people in the medical profession, you can have it all because they're all entwined anyway through the Spirit and through the love of God. And there's really no separation for you in Jesus' name. So you can have it all, Heather. You do not have to say, well, now I have to be this way because this is what's going on in my life. You can have it all. And God wants you to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. So I know that yesterday you had, you know, prayer to kind of release your heart from, from some things at the hospital, and I know that you're not carrying it to the same level you had been, that you're healed in the name of Jesus, and I know that God is going to use you in a mighty way to see people heal spontaneously, and you'll be able to write down and document in a journal the kinds of healings that you will see in the hospital and the kinds of angelic, watch for the angels, the kinds of angelic beings that you'll notice that are present in the hospital because people are praying, and when people pray, things change. So your eyes are going to be open, and you're going to see it in Jesus' name. And I just want to speak a, a release of pressure off of you in the name of Jesus, and not even from the hospital situation, I'm just talking about a release of pressure in finances off of you in Jesus' name so that you are absolutely, totally, and completely restored to the full level of joy that you are accustomed to walking in, set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Tim. Tim. Tim? Okay. <laughs> Close enough. I will, I will, I will. Stand up. I have a, well, a Tim in my family. My husband. But um, lay hands on him. Would you touch him? Good. <laughs> they like you. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say, I noticed when you were playing the guitar, um, and plus, I saw, you know, you should be kind of mad at him. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. 
I know you have an, it came to me that you have an immense love for music, that your life is music, music, music in, in so many ways. It's a consuming feeling that you have. And I don't think it's bad. I think it's great. I think that God wants to show you who you are in the realm of music and wants to develop you in that realm in a special way. I think that you're a person who could, maybe not at this particular moment in time, but you could go to places where people aren't saved and your presence there would be a real light and you would win people, not so much by what you preach, but by what you play. Do you know that instruments can prophesy? <laughs> you could play so well that it actually prophesies and people's hearts are touched. Music is a powerful, powerful way, right? Powerful way. Would you come here? Please. He knows that. Would you lay hands on him and impart to him in the name of Jesus and help stir him up in Jesus' name? So what you play can affect people's hearts. Tim, there's a spirit um, of condemnation that's on you. Because you look at yourself and you feel like, okay, yeah, these guys are okay and they're good, but what about me? Well, you're the same. You are the same good. You think a little less of yourself because you know where you've been. God knows where you've been, but God's been there with you. So he's not surprised. So I'm speaking that healing for you today in the name of Jesus and that you come into your place and you feel joined together with all these other wonderful young people in Jesus' name. So I speak that absolute healing over you and that freedom over you to be the musician, to be that man that God's called you to be. And I'm going to speak a restoration to you in your family in Jesus' name. It's not right at this set moment, but it's coming. And in the meantime, you have a family. And you have people who love you. And you are the real deal, okay? You're, you're not faking, okay? You are the real deal. So we acknowledge that in you, and we recognize the presence of God in you. And we bless you. Uh, and I believe that there's, there's a dreamer inside of you. And I call that dreamer forth. In Jesus' name. Did you have anything you wanted to say over here? I feel the same as always. You know, he just joined us. He's, he would come in at times and play. But uh, I know around a, maybe a couple of Sundays ago, we were playing. And he didn't have it. He didn't play. He was here. Let's worship. Mm -hmm. And he had his hands up the whole service. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that. And... God noticed that, you know. So I just feel that he's coming into his place, and we all, you know, like you were saying that way, you know, he was looking out, and he saw it, you know, and uh, so. Yeah. One man loves music to another. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Stand up. <laughs> she go laugh now. <laughs> I've known you for a while. <laughs> I've never known you in a better place than I see you right now. Wow. In spite of um, some pretty hard knocks, especially within the past 12 months, that tried to really rock your world, when things come against us from an unexpected place, uh, you just didn't see it coming. So I'm speaking a real healing over you in the name of Jesus. 
And I think you're in the process of having that healing. But there's, there's just a little bit of a wall. <laughs> Don't tear the wall down. <laughs> in Jesus' name. And I'm going to tell you, it's safe for you to be you. And you're very loved by God. He's extremely proud of you. And you have a future. Is there crickets in here? <laughs> <laughs> They're loud. <laughs> I thought, no, I'm having a hallucination. <laughs> what does the spirit of cricket mean? I don't know. <laughs> um, There are some things that you're dreaming for. And you'll be here for a while, and then they're going to take you someplace else. I speak in agreement with those in the name of Jesus. God has that door already prepared and open for you, and he's had it for a long time prepared and open. But he didn't want you to go until some things about your worth and value were absolutely established in your heart so you wouldn't be crushed. So don't hold back, even on the gifts that are inside of you by the power of the Holy Spirit, in music, but, but in other ways too. I believe you have a teaching anointing. I really do. And a gift to share and teach the Word of God and then demonstrate things in the realm of the Spirit. I know that there are some things that you're unhappy with Let me just tell you this. You are absolutely 100% beautiful. Beautiful. And when you look in the mirror, you see a beautiful person in that mirror because that's exactly who you are. And that's what God wants you to know. Okay? All righty. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This gentleman, Corey, right? Stand up, Corey. Um, David, could you come here? Folks, I know it's a little after one, and I understand that people have things to do. And if you have to leave, please don't think you will be offending me or bothering me at all. I, I totally understand, and God bless you, okay? No problem. Would you lay hands on him? I'm trying to get some of the people I know who walk in some different gifts to lay hands on some of the other folks because I believe that when it comes to the Holy Ghost, when it comes to having received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I can't add more Holy Ghost to you because you already have received the full measure of the Spirit the same way Jesus received him. There is no lesser Holy Spirit. So you, Corey, is that right? You have the full measure of the Spirit of the living God on you. But I'm asking David to lay hands on you because there's something in you that's very pastoral. You have a shepherd's heart. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to start a church, but it does mean that God is calling you to have a responsibility for people who got all messed up and kind of all caught up in things. And that with that, you know, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. Okay, And he says, you know, I love my sheep. I'd lay down my life for my sheep. And he did. And you have that kind of intensity around you. Um, you would go anywhere, try anything to rescue somebody or get them out. If somebody's your friend, they're your friend to the end. So there's a high level of loyalty that you walk in and that you prize. And that's, the, that's something, that's an attribute that you have that God likes because that level of loyalty is going to be used for the kingdom of God. There's a spark of creativity that you flow in that's unusual. But not unusual in a bad way, unusual in a very good way. Because it's pertinent to the people in your generation and it's going to help them wake up. I don't know if you write. I don't know what goes on in you. But I could almost see you writing some sort of a skit and having everyone act it out. I can see you bringing that kind of intensity to, to this place where people aren't, 
you know, people aren't always attracted by somebody preaching a message. Sometimes people are attracted by some other form of arts or communication, and it will and bring them back. <laughs> bring them somewhere. Bring them to a place that they're safe. You had to fight. Some of them lost some in the natural. <laughs> I mean, didn't always work honest. Scary honest. <laughs> And as you invest here in this church, and as you corporately all work together, you're going to see some things happen. And it will lead you beyond the doors of this church into other places and to do other things. But I just want to stir you up in that which God has deposited inside of you, remind you of And you don't have to think of it that way either. Who the Son has set free. Amen. Stand up. Mm -hmm. I liked your poem yesterday. I thought it was very, very well done. Beautiful. And uh, I just want to say to neighborhood that you're in, and you will literally fire fell. <laughs> they really want to get out of there. <laughs> so that went along. And so, and so that you could be a father in the church. Because God is looking to raise up some folks into fathers. You're already a father in the natural. Okay. But I'm talking about a, a, even a bigger picture. So if you think, well, I'm just going to be slowing down now. This is all kind of past now. You know, yeah, that was fun while it lasted, but it didn't really work out the way I had hoped it was going to work out. And I'm kind of like, no, no, no. Well, ultimately, it's your choice. But less than what I've, less than, if you choose less, this is a scary thing for me to tell you, but I'm going to tell you because I love you and you're my absolute brother. It won't be the will of God. Okay? God will love you. You're going to go to heaven. Everything's going to be nice. You're going to have a great family. None of that's going to go. But God has made a covenant with you for so much more. God's made a covenant with me for so much more, and I have a choice if I'm going to stay the same or if I'm going to step out. God love me no matter what I do, but it won't be the fulfillment of my destiny. And I cannot let circumstances speak louder to me than the voice of God. Nor can you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The reason why I got caught saying all that was because when I saw you yesterday, I felt like there was going to be acting as part of some of the things that you were going to see. I felt like you were going to have skits. I felt like you were going to have programs like that, and I felt like you were going to write some of those things and help facilitate some of those things. You're a worshiper. I know that. I remember you from the past worshiping God with your lovely mom. Wasn't that right? Yes. She's gone to heaven be with the Lord Jesus. Oh, you have a big encourager yes. <laughs> in heaven praying for you. Amen. Amen. Um, but, but there's a real gift in you for words and putting things together. There's even, you know, you guys can even make some videos and put those videos on YouTube and, and start affecting people's lives. And, and there's, there's a reason you're here and you have an influence to offer in Jesus' name. And you have an influence in your own family that is changing the lives of those you love and those who are dear to you. She's an intercessor. Get her to intercede for this church with some of the other la ladies, men, whoever they are. Get them. A lot is accomplished through prayer. Every great revival, for the most part, that I've read about came first because people prayed and called it in, and then it came in in the natural. So you have that job. God is taking care of you in every way you need him to take care of you. He is father and dad and best friend 
all at one time in your life. He has hedged you around every direction in Jesus' name. And you're going to walk through and walk up. in Just like this flower, so bright and red and pretty. It's a sign to me of the, here you have a gray shirt on. I like you. <laughs> Would you stand up, sir? Are you uncomfortable? May I speak over you? Oh, okay, great. You love John? Okay, then you can stand with me. We like you, John. We just like you, John. <laughs> you're a good man. You really are. Uh, you're a big man. And as big as you are, your heart is absolutely exactly as big as that, if not bigger. You're a big-hearted person. Um, people, you have a heart for people. And it's very powerful. And uh, you would do anything for anyone that you could do because that's who you are. I'm glad you're here. And I'll tell you why. Because they, you survived. <laughs> and, and there was, you'd be dead if it wasn't for God. You survived. So I want to speak a financial breakthrough in your life right now in the name of Jesus and a new door of opportunity for you to walk through, to start being able to fulfill the things that you need to see happen in your life. I'm recalling some of the things that you've lost back to you in the name of Jesus that you need and, and claiming it for you in Jesus' name, calling it home. And I think that there's a promotion for you that you're going to be promoted even in the work, workforce to a different level and be called into something higher because you have been faithful in little and God's getting ready to give you more. So I speak that over you today in the name of Jesus. Um, I speak a real, I, it's almost like a, the place you live. Um, are you married? Engaged. Engaged. Okay. I, I don't know where you live right now, God's going to take you out of that place. He's going to give you something better. So I'm speaking that over you in Jesus' name. And I don't know why, but that's important. I want you to have that in the name of Jesus. And God wants you to have that too. And so I'm just blessing you in that. I, I'm speaking a healing in your family in Jesus' name. Um, that there would be restoration. That needs to come into place right now, too, in Jesus' name. So everything is working together for good for you in this season. You're going to see a big change. It's going to go from where it was really sad to where it's really glad. In Jesus' name, okay? Amen. Uh, David, did you have something you wanted to say? Just as big as his heart is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as, as big as expectations in your heart are, and I, I know they are because I feel it. And that's how bigger the dreams are that God has for you. As soft as your heart is, and as big as it is, that is the softness that he has for you and others that you influence. Yeah. So you have a tremendous potential within your heart that he, he is building confidence, I think, in you more and more as you, as you seek his face. Yeah. And, and, and so there's a sensitivity in you, a more of a sensitivity in you for, for just the things of God that he is in it ask you to walk in, and you'll walk in them easily, not to be intimidated. Instead of people running from you because you're so big, <laughs> they'll be running towards you more and more and more. Amen. You can go anywhere with John with me. Amen. Because they want the comfort of your heart. They want the comfort of your heart, John. Amen. Amen. I know, I, I know that, that when, when you were up or you asked me a few weeks ago, I said a scripture about there are many teachers, but not many fathers. And, and that applies to you, you are a father. And, and, but more importantly, there's birth in you a father's heart as well. And so there's that, I believe, that connection of building fathers. You've got enough teachers, got enough instructors, but God wants real fathers. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
this guy, you were the keyboard player, right? Would you stand up? Could you come over here? Because I'm going to get a bad ring if I stand here. Would you extend your hands towards him? What's your name? Joshua. I'll try not to go to that place where, you know, it seems so obvious. It's like slapping you in the face kind of place. Okay, I try not to go to that place. Um, I love the way you played. There was a lot of integrity into the way you played. And a lot of... Um, what would you call it, Free, freedom? Or it was like subject to your interpretation because you have that creative gift that you hear things maybe a little slightly bit different from the way the natural person would be to, to play them, and you respond to that. And so I just want to speak increase over you in that gift too, in the name of Jesus, that not only... You're like what I do. You were called for that even when you were a brand new little. Um, not publicly. <laughs> <laughs> like, like in the shower. Name of Jesus. That sometimes, here's how I see it, and this will sound weird to you. So today, you and me take our legs and boom. <laughs> we kick the door open in faith in Jesus' name, and so now you have access to walk on through. Because that has been trying to disqualify you. You know that, right? It's been trying to make you think, oh, this is not possible. This is not what I can do. But it's lying. So we've opened that way up for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome. Your lovely wife. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Together in all kinds of weather, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I see the level of interest you have in details. I see you, you're someone who will sort and make things perfect. You will follow things down to their smallest detail because you're very detail-minded. And I think that that's a gift, and I bless you for that, in that gift, in the name of Jesus. But I also want to see you move in a new uh, atmosphere of freedom, too. So I'm speaking a freedom for you. Not that you can't be the person who fixes everything. You're a fixer. And that's a good thing to be. But now I'm speaking freedom over you. Because when you were a little child, there was a lot of freedom in you. <laughs> and I think, think the things of life tried to rob you of that sense of freedom. God's saying he is putting you back on the high top of a tree so you can fly. You've been used to walking. God's getting you ready to do some flying. Your perspective is going to change from ground level to heaven level. And you're going to see things from heavenly places. It's going to be liberating to you because in your heart of hearts, there's still that little kid, that little girl that believes and sees. And so I'm calling upon her in Jesus' name. I will speak that the Lord will restore to you everything that has been stolen from you in your realm of joy and in the levels of disappointment. That disappointment will not be part of your vocabulary anymore. It will be a, a past thing, but restoration and freedom will be part of your future. You are meant to fly. You're not meant to walk on the ground. So we release you to that in Jesus' name. All heaviness, all oppression, oppressive thoughts, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Stand up. I have to pick on all the kids because they're like, <laughs> I like them. Would you extend your hands towards her? I, I think I remember you one time when we prayed, you were having some kind of pain in your body. Was it your gallbladder or something like that? And you had surgery. Okay, I'm just trying to replay in my mind, you know, 
what what I remember, what I was thinking about. And uh, you look totally different to me than you did the last time. Um, you look kind of, I, obviously you had some pain, okay, but emotionally you look different. So you look different now than you did then. You are freer than you were before. And so um, you have a gift of being a real encouragement to people. You really do. You are a powerfully wonderful encourager. And you speak into the lives of your friends and to the lives of people you know and bring real encouragement to them when they feel down. You even have a sense about knowing if somebody's feeling down, even if they don't call you or say anything. You feel it because you're tuned into the spirit. So that's a gift that you have. You have a gift and a love for the little people, the little kids, <laughs> the little people. I didn't mean the leprechauns. <laughs> I meant the little people. And you have that going in you. There's something about you that has sympathy and understanding for children, and that's a gift. And I, I speak breakthrough in that gift in the name of Jesus. Here's the one thing I'm going to tell you. The hope and encouragement you would be happy to give anybody in this room, will you receive it for yourself? <laughs> Will you believe it about yourself? That's the challenge that you have. You know why? Because you are real hard on you. <laughs> but she'd be the first to help anybody else out, wouldn't she? Because she's wonderful. You are wonderful. So we're just speaking for that transformation over your heart. You know, sometimes when a person's been broken, that's all they could think about is, and, and trust is very hard for broken people. It's very hard because it's not that they don't want to trust everyone. They do, but they're afraid to because I used to say this about myself, you know, punch me hard or kick me. Okay, I can take that. But if you're mean to me and hurt me, Oh, I can't take that so good. That, that stays with me, and that's how she is. She'd rather take a punch in the mouth than to get beat, beat up in the heart. So we speak a real healing for you in Jesus' name. And let me tell you this. You are making progress. And don't let anybody tell you different. And I don't think anybody is, but maybe you are. <laughs> so you're set free in Jesus' name, and you're loved, in Jesus' name. Did you have something you wanted to say over? Oh, okay. You just came to be supportive. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. She's your tissue giver. Praise the Lord. That's a good ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, Dwight, is that you? Praise the Lord, Dwight. Now, Mama, Mother Gladys told us, imagine she had a bookmarker yesterday with your name on it. Yeah. So I promised myself, if you came to church today, I didn't know if he was going to make it or not, David, but if you came to church, I was definitely going to pray for you because I owed it to Mother Gladys to do that. And plus... <laughs> We, we talked about you. It was good stuff. <laughs> okay? So we're going to, would you extend your hands towards Dwight? Dwight, we're going to send you a corporate blessing today in the name of Jesus. We speak rest and peace for you in Jesus' name. And freedom from any, like, nervousness or anxiety, we cancel that off for your life today in the name of Jesus so that you have this sense of well-being, okay, and the sense of being covered and protected. So we speak that, and we speak a blessing in your business in the name of Jesus that you would prosper and, and, and you would be able to... Um, Feel good about yourself. 
because you need to. You're kind of in a little bit of a rut, you know. And so they keep going around the same mountain. <laughs> but it's time to break out and be free. And so we speak that over you too, that you don't go around this mountain any longer, but that you're free and you're able to make progress. This is the year of your progress in Jesus' name. You're, you're going forward and you're strengthened in Jesus' name. And your mama loves you. <laughs> and we all got to know you and we love you too. So God bless you, Dwight. <laughs> I knew I was going to see him today. Stand up, my brother. What's your name? Jerry. Pardon? Jerry. Jerry. Okay, Jerry. 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 Jared. I'm sorry. I like your, like, yeah, like the jewelry store. Gotcha. Okay. Come on over here. He's not shy. Come here. <laughs> um, you guys come over here. Is it okay if they lay hands on you? Okay. Okay, I'm going to get out of the way so you guys can get by him. I'm going to minister to you next, so don't go away, okay? All right, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I thought when you came in, the, the one overwhelming thought that I had when you came in was that there's a young man who has a lot of confidence. I mean, you brought that confidence right into the room with you. So you have a mentality about yourself that, I'm going to do this. I can do it. And I believe you in the name of Jesus. I believe that there is a call of God on your life. I believe that you were brought into the kingdom specifically for that call. I think that there's a business call on your life. I really do. I believe that some things are going to come to place for you to be able to extend yourself into some brand new ventures and that God is calling you in some of those areas. I also believe that you're going to have to be careful, and here's a word of caution I'm going to give you. Don't trust everybody who tells you something. Speaking discernment for you in the name of Jesus, because some people don't have the same good, eye, good feelings about your future that God does. So I'm going to believe that you will hear God's voice, and if there's something you're supposed to back off from, you'll know what to do. And you'll immediately make the best choice. So I'm speaking that over you. Not to make you feel intimidated by making some new starts, but to let you know that you need God's voice to help and guide you in the way you're supposed to go. You, um, I, think that you, I think that you were doing a few more things in the realm of this, the church or the spirit before, but you got backed off. So I'm calling you back in in the name of Jesus, so that you would be able to operate in the fullness of what God has for you. Actually, because he has confidence, he's a blessing to give some of that confidence out to you all, too, because he walks in that. So that's a blessing in the name of Jesus. And uh, there is money around you. <laughs> Get some of that money. <laughs> I got, you give him a hug now, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know that lady. <laughs> but there is money around you, and you have ideas. And I bless you in that, in the name of Jesus. I speak peace to your heart, though, from a situation you just got out of. Sorry. And a healing for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. I think I know you. <laughs> Tell me your name again. Ben. Ben. Okay. So one's missing, is that right? Okay, all right. Two are missing? Okay. Oh. <laughs> no. Aren't you their mother? Yeah. <laughs> Don't let that shake you, Ben. <laughs> Don't be scared. No, I'm only kidding. So you have gro I, you've grown in drumming. You've gotten better, and I just want to encourage you in that and bless you. I know that's not your fundamental thing, though. 
okay? That's the way you're giving support in the name of Jesus. That's how you're filling in, how you're supporting. You're carrying some real heavy things, and that's what we're going to take care of today in the name of Jesus. You're carrying some real heavy past things, and so we speak absolute liberty and freedom to you today, Ben, in the name of Jesus, that you will not for one more day allow those things to... Um, control you or define you in the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes we do things we're not supposed to. Have any of you ever done something you weren't supposed to do? <laughs> Here we all are raising our hands. But when we turn that around and, and are with God, then we're absolutely set free from that. Romans chapter 5 says, not only did Jesus forgive us, you know, remove our sins, but he took upon himself all the punishment associated with sin. So you're free from that. So you can't be punishing yourself because God isn't punishing you, okay? And uh, we're going to see you be able to. He won't always live here. You're going to move on at some point in time, but God brought you back around so you could feel absolutely whole. So suck up all the wholeness in the name of Jesus and be totally and completely restored. And uh, your heart feels real, real fragile right now, like it's been broken. I don't know if there's been a relationship or something that's happened, and I speak a real healing to you today in the name of Jesus and wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys can sit down. Thank you. You were singing yesterday or doing Hi, but I saw you yesterday. Stand up. Okay. Are you together in all kinds of weather? Stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Who do you belong to here? That, okay. All right. Oh, wonder, oh, I better wrap this up because you have to have the dancing. Okay. 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 Um, would you lay hands on them too? Court, would you please lay hands on them too? Yeah. And David, come stand with me too. You're so smart. You really are. You have a lot going on inside. And um, I found that you are a very direct person. Mm -hmm. You know how to explain things. You know you're very logical in some ways. You see things for pretty clearly what they are. You're somebody who can give advice to people because you see things very clearly without being muddied up by a lot of emotional baggage. And so that's a strength that you have. So you're somebody people could come to for counseling and for help and for encouragement. And, and you would be able to give them some sound advice. By the same token, that gets you in trouble with people, okay? Because they think, who does she think she is? But, <laughs> okay, gets you in some trouble with people. But that actually is a gift that you have inside of you. So we are calling it forth in Jesus' name and that the love of God is so clearly established in your heart that as you share with people, it would touch them in a wonderful way. I, I think you're very creative. I think that uh, you're very business-oriented as well. I think that you're, are you guys like, you're going to get married or? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, you're a very nice complement to each other because what you're strong in, he could use some help in. What he's strong in, you could use some help in. So you're a good balance for one another. So I just want to bless you in that, in the name of Jesus. I think you're all about being married. I do. I think you're all about the wedding and getting things organized and making things happen. I think that that's part of who you are and that's part of the creativity that you have going on in your life. What I think about you, too, is that you come from an inheritance of people, your grandma, your mom, who loved God. 
And that obviously is in your life. So I just want to bless you in that, in the name of Jesus. And I call up a prophetic anointing in your life, too, to be able to operate where you see um, things in people's lives and you minister to them in the love of God. So I call that forward for you in Jesus' name. And for you, there is a kind, kind heart in you. You are a kind man, and you operate in a high level of generosity and kindness. You're smart. Mm -hmm. And what you put your hands to will prosper. I want you to know that. Not only are you going to be a good provider, you're going to be able to provide exceedingly above and beyond. So I'm calling that out in you in the name of Jesus. You're a financer for the kingdom of God, and I bless you in that. And things are going to happen in your life that are going to, either through dreams or just thinking, you're going to see some things that you could get involved in, and you're going to take that risk, and it's going to be a blessing to you. You're gentle and love people, and he's kind of has the potential to be a father to people too. So would you pray that for him? Well, Father, we thank you for Sam's heart. And Father, we thank you that you called this from the foundation. When, when before Sam was even created, Father, you have kind of put that, look, that little uh, message in his heart, a kind heart, a gentle heart, the heart of a father. And so we thank you that you're bringing forth a man, a father, who will touch other young men, adults, teenagers, even younger, Father, to bring them corporately to a place of love for you. Father, that is a gift that cannot be revoked from him. You've planted that in his heart since he's been a little child. So we thank you that you've brought him here, and you'll be a part of that. You'll be a part as that generation, both of you, that will live on in bringing other people to Christ, bringing them to that faith of love in Christ. You have that continuing generation that Mary spoke of earlier, not just you, but God is doing that here in this church. You two will be a part of that generation to keep this word alive. And he's planted that in your heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If anybody is sick in their body at all, if you have any pain at all, would you just kind of... Let me just minister to you right away in the name of Jesus. We want to speak healing to her in Jesus' name. Don't even stand up. Let us just speak over you. Um, We want to really speak healing and restoration over you in Jesus' name because you really need that healing touch from God. And, but you've been open to receive it. It isn't because you haven't been asking God to help you. You have, 100%. And so we're just speaking that that comes to pass in your life. Things are quickened. Um, bones and muscles are put into their right place in the name of Jesus. All pressure, all strain is removed in Jesus' name. That you're able to sleep good at night and that your sleep is absolutely sweet In Jesus' name, you also carry something very creative inside of you, too, in the realm of music and things. And so I bless you in that realm as well. In Jesus' name, I speak for a restoration for you to start to do the things that you desire in your heart that you haven't been able to do. So there's a real return for you in Jesus' name. Um, You have a powerful call on your life. You really do. I would say you are a real minister, and I just bless you in that, in Jesus' name, and you'll be able to continue and continue with full strength in Jesus' name. I speak restoration in, um, I don't know who it was really close to you in your family, too, that um, there's a break. I speak a return and a wholeness and a healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, Anybody who's sick in their body at all? Are you raising your hand because you don't feel good? What, what's wrong? Can you say what on? Your shoulder? Okay. Tim's going to lay hands on your shoulder. Is it what we, kind of what we touched on yesterday? Josh is going to lay hands on you. Anybody else? What is it? 
your shoulder too. Oh, we don't want any more shoulder troubles. Becca's got you in Jesus' name. Anybody over here? You have pain, chronic pain, something's bothering you. Oh, your knees. Okay, they got it hooked up right here. <laughs> Stephanie, I just want to tell you, I'm going to encourage you to continue to release and let go, okay? Okay, you're, you're carrying it a little tiny bit in your face and on your shoulders, a little tiny bit. I know it's been hard. I'm not dismissing the hardness, but I'm just speaking peace over you in the name of Jesus. I want to reassure you that God has heard your prayers. He knows your heart, and things are subject to change. Please know that. Do not get bogged down. Do not go into condemnation. Do not accuse yourself. Let that alone, because you know what it'll try to do is make you sick. And so we speak healing and health to you in the name of Jesus, that you don't succumb to any beat yourself up things, okay? So no, no, Stephanie, in Jesus' name, okay? Okay, thank you, Jesus. Anybody else who's in any kind of pain? Because there's the presence of the Lord here to heal bodies. So anybody? We're good. Was it your knee? Oh, Corey's got gotcha. you. Okay, thank you, Jesus. David, if you would. Well, Father, all things are possible to you. And Father, you said, be it according to your faith. So, Father, we're asking that our faith grows, our faith in you, and that we see that wave of healing washing over our bodies, wherever it might be, that we're bringing that from what we don't see into the, into the natural right now. But it's only through what you've already done for everyone here that we receive our healing. You want to heal us all. From the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And we receive that healing right now in the name of Jesus, who carried the weight of broken bodies, who carried the weight of shame, who carried the weight of, of, of depression and despondency. But Father, we're carrying and letting that that light of your love, that light of your healing, wash over every part of our heart, every part of our mind, and every part of our body, that we might be healed not according to our ability, but to our trust in your ability, our trust in you and your abilities to heal us all. And so, Father, that your name would be glorified in this, and you get the glory, and we testify even more and more of your great love for each and one of us. So I call and claim everyone healed right now in the name of Jesus. Let it be according to your faith and trust in the one who carried the weight for us all. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to just finish up real quick, but I just have a couple more things to do very fast. Well, Liz, I'll be seeing you maybe at the airport tomorrow. I don't know. Are you going to? No, she can only be gone for two weeks. That's what you told me. Okay. Put your hand right on him. Sir, would you come here? Would you put your hand? Do you mind if he puts his hand on you? Uh. <laughs> I'll lay some hands. I'll lay some hands. Don't make me have to get Big John. Oh. <laughs> I will. Nice game. <laughs> I want to speak healing over you in the name of Jesus. Total and complete restoration and healing. You, I know um, you're a private person in so many ways, and, and I get it. And you wouldn't call attention to yourself. That's why I'm calling attention to you and stepping in. But uh, I just, I can't, um, the kindness that you possess and the love for your family that you possess is amazing. So I, he's a real blessing, isn't he? Mm -hmm. What a wonderful relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Pardon me? He was sent from the man above. You would never say that, but she's saying it. <laughs> and it's true. 
And now you need a boost in your health. And that's what we're speaking for in Jesus' name. Every part of your physical being, every organ in your body functions in the perfection to which God created it. Healing virtue touches and, and breaks through in all your body. You're getting ready to have some of the funnest, best days of your life. I'm speaking that over you in Jesus' name, where you can be with your lovely wife and enjoy each other's company. That's what your future is. And you're going to see a new settling in for your children. And things that have been up in the air will be just rightly divided and, and taken care of. There is a realm of peace that's going to magnify itself in your family in a beautiful way. So you don't have to carry that no more. <laughs> and in not carrying it, it allows the healing virtue of Jesus to quicken your physical body. So peace, my brother. Jesus' name. Peace, brother. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And how's mommy? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. The final say. Okay. But hey, be it done unto her according to her faith. So I just want to speak strength and encouragement over you today in the name of Jesus. Um, you're somebody who just sticks with it no matter what. You have a spirit of tenacity. You're a tenacious woman. That means you get something inside of yourself and you don't let it go no matter what. And there, that's faithfulness. And that's what God is calls faithfulness. That's the kind of faithfulness he has about us. So I'm speaking the reward of faithfulness over your family in the name of Jesus, that what you've prayed for, you see come to pass. And it's a generational blessing. It includes 